Welcome back. Wouldn't it be great if you could fit a rear anti roll bar setup on your Fiat Singer Cheno or Say Cheno using off the shelf parts with no modifications at all? Wouldn't that be good? Well, you can. Stick around. You heard me correctly. Rear anti roll bar setup for your Singer Cheno and Say Cheno with parts that you can buy off the shelf, no modification required. Bolt straight on. Am I talking rubbish? No, I'm not. I'm not talking rubbish. I'm going to take you through it today. But before we start, one massive thank you to the person who's actually responsible for this, because I'm taking zero credit at all other than for fitting it to my car. And that is Duncan Rose. If any of you haven't seen him or followed him on Instagram, Facebook and such forth and such like, you should. He's got some wicked little fits. He's got a Y10. He's got one of the nicest Cinquecentos, I'm going to say in the country, which isn't necessarily that hard because there's not many of them. He's got a wicked 16 valve build and he's also just bought and built an awesome little 900cc one as well, which he's been doing up for the track day in Kerbera, which he's bringing with him. And he's the person uh, who basically put me onto all of these bits. He sent me all the information, uh, basically fired me in the right direction. I bought all the parts and he's walked me through it and it's going to be sweet. So I'm going to take you through the part list now, show you exactly what's needed. Uh, then I will fit it to the car, show you it fitted because it's not particularly difficult. Just to explain any few little bits that you need to know, and that is it. It's going to be pretty short and sweet, but it's supposed to make a huge difference to the handling on your car, especially someone like me, who is lucky enough to have an uprated ABEC anti roll bar in the front of mine, which is slightly thicker. Uh, and this matches that nicely. So let me grab my box of bolts and I will explain. Grab your notepad. Grab your notepads. Okay, here we go. Now, before I tell you what anti roll bar you're going to need to buy, I'm just going to take you through all the other bits first because this is dead simple. Um, I'm going to put all the information in the actual comments to the video just because I may make the odd mistake now and I'll be really specific in the actual comments. Uh, so I'm just going to take you through this now. Now, you will see people join these anti-roll bars to a car with drop links, uh, with all kinds of adjustment and stuff like that. But for ease of replacement, uh, simplicity, etc, etc, we've gone for like a really bog standard set straight off the shelf. These are Audi A6 drop links. These are the plastic ones. These are half price. They're super light. Uh, the aluminium ones are about £60, these are about 30 dead simple. Audi A6 drop link. Now, you're going to need to bolt this to the anti-roll bar. So, thankfully, you can get Audi A6 drop link bolts. Uh, again, not very expensive at all. This bolts the drop link to the actual anti-roll bar itself. Now, for those of you who don't know, haven't seen an anti-roll bar set up before, the actual bottom of the drop link bolts through the uh, same bolt that actually holds the bottom of the shock on. Now, obviously, you're adding a good chunk of width onto that, so the stop bolts aren't going to be uh, wide enough. So you need 100mm M10 bolts. Now, you need the high tensile ones, obviously they don't snap, and you need the ones that are part threaded, because most of this is where the actual wall of the uh, strength is going to be. If they're threaded, they have a risk of snapping. So you need these, and obviously the nut. Uh, I haven't tested yet if you can use the original nut on this, but... We'll worry about that in a minute. You also need a little pair of these. Uh, now, these are M12 to M10 adapters because, uh, as I just pointed out, that's an M10 bolt, but the hole in the anti roll bar is an M12. So, this is just to stop the bolt from wobbling around in there. So, that will go into the actual anti roll bar itself and the bolt will go through it. Now, when I fit it, we will work out whether we need two of these on each side or we will up with one of them. We'll be okay. Done. Now, you need something to physically bolt the anti-roll bar to the car. Now, what we're using is these. Now, you need some heavy-duty ones. Don't cheap out too much. These are 67 millimeter exhaust U-bolt clamps. Now, what will happen is this will go through the beam, and then the actual anti-roll bar clamps will bolt onto this side. And then once you tighten it all up, this tightens it onto the beam and then tightens the clamp onto there. So, you need two of these bad boys. Now, apart from that, you're going to need an anti-roll bar and brackets and bushes like you would on any anti-roll bar so i'm going to show you which one i bought and it was super cheap so i've already told you to put audi parts on your fiat but now we're going one step further and we've got this little nugget here is from a mark III ford focus and it requires zero modification now don't you worry at the moment it's looking pretty scabby but because i've got the curb sprint day coming up pretty soon and i want to make sure everything actually works and i don't want to waste too much time it is going on like this if i can i'm even going to be using the mark three bushes um, and maybe even just these brackets just a little bit cut down which i'll explain in a minute but here it is it's a pretty compact unit uh, they do come in various diameters i've got a 22 mil one which works out perfectly because my ABEC anti-roll bar on the front of mine is 21 mil. So that keeps it nice and neutral. So 
like I said before, you'll have one end bolt to the top of the uh, drop link. The drop link goes down. The other end down here bolts to the bottom shock mount. And then you'll have your U-bolts go around the beam. They go through these two holes here. You clamp it all together. Bob, your uncle. Now, Duncan has told me, because he's already fitted this, um, he did fit because he didn't get the brackets with his anti-roll bar. Some aftermarket uh, brackets and bushes. The ones he originally got were a little bit thin and they just bent. They weren't any good. So he's going to try and cut down some originals. Now, my plan is because he said these ones, as you can see, are pretty hefty and you are working with not a lot of space. So what might need to happen, if I can just hold this, is that this might just need cutting. So instead of it having these huge outside bits on it, uh, I might need to just trim it down. Now, I haven't fitted it yet, so I'll report back soon if that's the case. Now, if they are too big or they start causing too many problems, then I'll have to look at some kind of aftermarket 22 mil bushes and brackets. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And it's as simple as that. That is all that is needed. So I want to get this car up on, up on, its, uh, on some ramps. It's usually best to fit this and tighten everything up while the wheels are actually under load. Uh, rather than having it up in the air, it is just better. Um, you better line everything up and we'll go from there. But keep your finger, everything crossed. This is it. And look at that. 100, 150 pound maximum full anti-roll bar kit for the back of your car. Let's go fit it. Actually, before we get too carried away, I've got to cut these off. Because the scrappy just snapped it off the other end there. So I need to cut these off first. And then we'll get cracking. And here's phase one. Now, you'll have to excuse the quad bike in the back. I promise you I am nearly finishing this off for the next episode. Anyway... Uh, so, again, this is all trial and error at the moment. I fitted these in a way that I think they're supposed to go. So these go at the top uh, with the actual Audi A6 bolts there. Now, again, obviously, I've left these nice and loose because, you know, you're going to need a little bit of movement. And this will go down and then the shock bolt will go through it. So really, all I need to do now is to hopefully loosen these up a little bit, give them a little bit of a clean. Like I said, I'm not going to worry too much. I'll paint this again when I know it all works okay. Again, with this one, give this a little bit of a clean up, try and get it to move around a little bit, and then we'll get the car up in the air and then just uh, make it happen. So we ran into a bit of a problem. Spent about an hour and 40 minutes trying to get this thing on. Couldn't get exhaust hangers off, all those kinds of things. Finally got one side fitted. Proper tricky to get it all in there because you haven't got much space. I've uh, got the bolts lined up, got to the other side, and I'm about, I'm gonna say 10 millimeters out. I'm gonna stick a picture up so you can see what I mean on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, Uh, and unfortunately, Duncan, my man, was busy at the time, so I couldn't mess him or anything. But eventually, I got hold of him, um, and he told me I needed to get these, uh, cut these little bits off the anti roll bar, which I didn't realise. Uh, so I had to take it all back off, and now I've got to try and cut these things off. So I think it's going to be a bit of a task, but I'm just going to quickly flip it and show you what I mean. So if you do this, make sure you do it before you try and fit it. Otherwise, you're going to waste a load of time. But um, I'll just turn it around. It should be no big deal. Uh, yeah. There we go. So it's these things. So this is almost what stops the anti roll bar from slipping so it stays in the exact place but obviously i need it to slip in about this far um it's no big deal because obviously once it's bolted it's not going anywhere so these little metal things i think they're actually like fully part i was hoping they would just be spot welded on or something but they're not so if i have to i'll just cut it off in chunks uh, and then grind it smooth and then that way then i can move the anti roll bar bush just in about 10 mil either side and then it should bolt up there's a couple of tiny little bits i needed to trim on the actual car there's like a little bolt that was slightly in the way and I needed to cut a tiny little bit of the exhaust hanger off because again, it wouldn't fit, which is part of what took so long to do. But I can tell you all this and it probably cut about an hour and a half out of your job. Uh, so you can thank me for that later or thank Duncan, whichever which way you want to look at it. Well, that was way easier than I was expecting. Turns out they are actually uh, basically just kind of put on, I suppose, press fitted into there. So on this side, I started cutting off in chunks before actually eventually it just came loose and fell off. And this one, all I did was just cut one side, spin it around, cut the other side, and whack it with a hammer, and then it came off in two halves. So all I'm going to do now is just to save me any problems with being able to slide the bush and stuff, I'm just going to clean this all up. And I know I should paint it. I know I should paint it because once it's on the car, I probably won't bother taking it off to paint it anytime soon. But I'm running low. <clears throat> but I'm running low on time. I've got another car to fix. My VRS is playing up now, so it's going to smash this out of the park. So yep, yeah, get the file sander on it. Get these on get the car back up in the air and i'm hoping it's gonna be about 45 minutes all in bolting this up assuming i don't run into any problems with this bottom mountain but god i hope i don't 
Now I've run into a problem, and the problem is going to stop me fitting this to the uh, Lemon before the Kerber Sprint Day, which is massively disappointing, because I really want to see what a Cinquecento went like uh, around a track with a rear anti roll bar, but I've run into a problem and I can't get the parts quick enough. Now, this is my problem. I don't know if it's by design or whether the rubber's kind of swollen over time or something, but you can see how much further the rubber bush sits away from this. And the problem that I've got is that the U-bolts that I'm using really are for hanging exhaust. So they're not hugely long. And as it is, only about 10 mil of this will sit outside, which is enough to bolt it up. But because of that extra distance, it just won't do it. I can't thread the bolts. So what I need is a different bush. And obviously I'm showing you how to do this at home. So I wanna make sure that all the bits I tell you to buy are tickety boo and they're the right ones. So Duncan, who showed me how to do this in the first place, uh, he sent me a link for the ones that he's using. Um, they're actually like one for uh, some kind of Volkswagen or another. They're like a race bush, black polyurethane, um, and the brackets are a lot smaller and stuff. And he says they fit fine. So I may well buy those. They are £40, but I would say even then, £150 for a complete custom rear anti roll bar set, but it doesn't really require any uh, fabrication. I know I've had to cut a couple of little bits off and tweak a few little things, but it's all super minor. But it is a massive shame. But um, I need to get this video out because I've got another video in the works already on the mini quad. That's nearly done. That's going to be going out soon. And obviously I've got my sprint day in, as of today, two days time. And I'm running out of space on my phone and running out of brain capacity to remember what video is doing what and when. So just stick with me on this. This is basically part one of the uh, roll bar. When I get back, I'll have the parts, I'll get it all fitted and we'll finish that up probably as part of another episode or I'll just stick it out as a short video number in part two. So if you want something similar to this, I'm going to start sticking all the links up. Um, I may well do that in the second video so I know for sure that all the parts that I'm telling you are right. So don't disappear. If you want a rear anti roll bar for your small Cento, stick around for another episode and uh, I will see you soon. Now I've got to get cracking on the mini quad and start loading up all this stuff for my track day. Video coming soon about that too. So see you soon, people.